What you doing, Marty? Washing this old pig. What is that? It's filthy. You think maybe we're gonna camp in it at some point? Unless we get a bus. Yeah, we gotta have something to sleep in out in the desert, right? That's right. Tent's not gonna cut it. I ain't freezing to death during the night, cooking to death during the day out there in a tent. Not to mention it might be kinda difficult with the three dogs. You can't really just leave them hanging out in a tent all day long. here and take a nap. Go figure. Don't let him fool you. I do my fair share. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sal here, and as you can see, Marty's busy spiffing up the old fifth wheel while I'm laying back and soaking up some sun here on this sunny Sunday day. Now as I mentioned in a previous video, the one where we went shopping for the schoolie, we've never even camped, not even once, in the fifth wheel. So you might be wondering, why did we even buy a fifth wheel in the first place if we were never even going to use it? Well, that's not exactly what our intention was when we set out and bought the thing to begin with. Here's the deal. The whole reason we bought the fifth wheel in the first place was because we were looking to downsize. I don't know, that makes no sense in light of a recent announcement where we're looking to buy a schoolie because of course a schoolie is going to be a lot bigger than this fifth wheel that we have. You have to remember when we got back from our second time out in the desert, we had traveled with the diesel pusher, it was a 34 footer. Uh, Class A Gulfstream and we were pulling the Prius behind on a car hauler and it took up a lot of space. I mean it was 40 feet probably, 45, 46, 45, 46 Marty says, of length and there were a few places that we weren't able to access because of our length. Now I know what you're thinking, when you're boondocking it doesn't matter and that's right, when we're boondocking it doesn't matter. You can stay in whatever size rig and you don't have issues other than if you're trying to go off road and you got this beautiful class a you may not want to because stuff has a tendency to shake rattle and roll and possibly break but aside from that when we were traveling with the big rig there were a few state national parks we couldn't get into because of our length a lot of those parks aren't equipped to handle big rigs and so like Joshua Tree, that was one place we wanted to stay and they just didn't have a number, enough uh, sites accessible for big rigs and so that was one of the reasons why we decided to downsize. Also the other thing you have to keep in mind is that when we were out the first time around we didn't bring a vehicle, we just had the Class A and we found big lesson learned that you don't go traveling without some other modes of transportation because you need to run for groceries. If you want to go crawling out in the desert, you're not going to drive your diesel pusher out there. And so, second time around, we dragged the Prius along. You got to tell them about we did buy a moped that was owned by some movie producer that they wouldn't tell us who it was. But oh yeah, we did the first time around. We did buy a moped, and Marty used that to tool into town. 
<laughs> the thing barely what did 35 40 miles an hour <laughs> and he's driving out, groceries. out in the salt and sea to the family dollar um, and it was owned by a movie producer the guy wouldn't say who but apparently it was and it was in mint condition it was an 87 Yamaha with 30 some miles on it Yamaha Raz moped with 30 original miles on it. it was like brand new yeah so that that was our first um, mo set of wheels when we were out traveling well then the second time around we dragged the Prius along well you ain't gonna get out out in the desert too far with a Prius you can't do a whole lot of off-roading with a Prius and so we ended up for Christmas Marty surprised me by buying the two fat tire mini bikes well the fat tire mini bikes we ran into an issue when we headed out to Death Valley because they're not street legal and in Death Valley they don't let you drive around with non street legal vehicles on any of the trails or dirt roads or anything like that so when we got back, we really sat down and looked at it and said, what do we want to accomplish? What do we want to do? And one of the biggest things is get out in the desert, get off road and access places that normally you wouldn't. Even if it means parking in a spot and backpacking in part of the way. Well, that's where the fifth wheel came in. Between the wanting to downsize our size and then having some four wheel drive vehicle. We figured having a truck with a camper or trailer, whatever would be their best option. Well, we were looking to buy, we bought third party, you know, a third party private seller and purchased the fifth wheel. It was, we paid not too much for it. I think around $5,000 and it was actually in really good shape for its age and so to sell it, now would be the time. Well, I'm getting sidetracked because the whole point was to talk about why, why we never went camping in it to begin with. Well, what ended up happening is that September when we were getting ready to leave, Marty ended up having a heart attack. Some of you might remember that from older videos where I alluded to that. And so because of that, we were basically stuck here for the winter. His doctor had a series over six to eight months worth of doctor's appointments and exams and follow-ups and all that, trying to figure out why somebody his age and in um, his seemingly good health, why somebody like him would have a heart attack. Well, it turns out he has advanced coronary artery disease, we figure, which is probably from years of working with Teflon in the factory. So. I digress again the whole point is why didn't we go camping well when you're here up in the north woods you really aren't gonna go camping during the summer because everybody else and their brother is up here camping so for us to go camping for a weekend or maybe you know go for a week-long vacay with the fifth wheel, it just never made sense because everybody and their brother was out flocking to the campgrounds. And in Wisconsin, there really aren't a whole lot of places to free camp, to boondock. And so for us, it just was one of those no brainers. We're just gonna stay here at the place on the lake. Well, then winter came along this past winter. And even though we really wanted to get out and do some traveling, something told us that we really needed to stay behind. As it turned out, it was a good thing we did. Marty had a second heart attack the day after Christmas. And so, it would not have been, our story probably would have turned out a whole lot differently had we made that trip out. Added to that, this whole situation that's going on now with the Rona, we would have been stuck out west somewhere and with his health, I'm thankful that we didn't go. Somebody upstairs was probably looking out for us and guiding us to make that decision to stay behind. That's what I think. Now, as we've, as I had mentioned, we we're talking about getting a schoolie and you're all thinking, well, why would you even do that if you wanted to downsize and you want to get off road? Well, I think what we're going to do is, because we haven't found the perfect bus and it's probably going to take a while to find that perfect bus. And to find that bus, we're probably going to have to look out of state. 
because up here in Wisconsin, you know, you have issues with rust and all that. And so we're, we're banking on that with Marty's health. We think we've got the situation under control. He's quit smoking, finally, and he's eating better, exercising, and so his doctor feels more confident about where he's at. And we do as well. So our plan is, in the meantime, we're gonna keep shopping for a schoolie, but when fall comes, we're gonna pack up, pack up the fifth wheel and head out west as long as there aren't other ongoing worldwide issues with the Rona. This is what happens when the mice get into your camper during the winter. They wreak havoc. Even though we had mouse traps set up, apparently they were able to evade the traps long enough to chew up poop and drag in unmentionables from outside trying to nest in the thing. That's all the more reason why we need to clean this thing up and get it back out on the road where it was meant to be because I'm not running a hotel for mice this winter. Either the fifth wheel goes or we go out west with the fifth wheel. And I'm guessing going out west with the fifth wheel is gonna be a lot better than getting rid of this thing and staying here as we search for the perfect bus. Well, as much as I'd love to keep laying here in the sun, chit-chatting with y'all, watching Marty work, I'm thinking, I got some stuff to clean up. Cause who wants to be frying eggs in a frying pan? That mice, mice were leaving their turns behind. Blah. So this is, this is the part where I come in and do my part with the domesticated stuff. Which Marty isn't as good at as I am. Just saying. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. Before I start touching any of that stuff, I'm going to put on my glove. Bend over. Just kidding. Put on my glove because stuff's nasty. And I'm shaking it in here so the dogs don't get into it. And then I'll wash it in hot, hot water. Bleach it. Dry it on high heat. Now that I got this under control, I'm pretty sure I can go back to chillaxing.